Hello, comrades! Welcome back to Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. My name, of course, is Obed Potato. A couple of things to say on the outset of this episode. First of all, we're looking at Oil Island. I've taken the liberty of, uh, of renaming it Krudsky. Either that or Crude Sky. Uh, Crude Sky sounds like, uh, I don't know, like an indie horror band. Is a horror band a, a, a genre of music? I don't know. Don't ask me these questions. I'm not au fait with, uh, with what the kids are listening to these days. Anyway, uh, yeah, Works and Resources Soviet Republic. We're back. <laughs> We're back. We're here. Uh, things are going well. Thank you very much to everyone who stuck around till the end of the episode, who, uh, who, who like me, thought that cookies are indeed delicious. That's right. Stay tuned to the end of this episode for the next code word, which you're required to enter in the comments below in order to get permission to watch the next episode of Soviet Republic. That's right. No, I'm just joking. I wouldn't do that. But seriously, stick around to the end for the code word. Anyway, um, I thought we would start over at this side of the map, dear comrade, in order to evaluate our progress of building all of these oil wells. And I gotta be honest, look at this. This is going, this is going pretty darn well. I mean, we were faffing around, we were faffing around with Cole Gradsky at the other side of the map over there for, you know, the last episode or two. And in the meantime, everything has been built up. Everything has been built up. Now, that's not to say that it's perfect. No, not by any stretch of the imagination. Ooh. Uh, yeah, give me some bulldozers over here, sure, whatever. Uh, yeah, give me some bulldozers over here, because we need bulldozers in order to flatten this area out. There's still a bunch more oil that we want to that we want to get access to. However, I just thought it would be worth mentioning that, you know, I'm really, actually, rather happy with the uh, with the incredible progress that we have, in fact, made. It's uh, it's looking real, real good. Anyway, we get the bulldozers for here. We can start uh, terrain, terrain terraforming. Just terraforming will do, potato. Just, just, you know, one word. One word, whereas two will do. No, what's the what's the saying? Always use one word when two will do. No, always use two words when one will do. Well, that depends. If you're writing an essay for, you know, school, university, college, or whatever, always use two words. Or even try and use three words where, where one will just do. If you're a regular human being and you want to have polite conversation with uh, with an individual, try and use one word when, when two will do. You know, people, people will thank you for being... Uh, you know, for being, um, for being, for being very time efficient. That's, that's the sort of motto that I've tried to live my life by. Anyway, um, I don't really know where I'm going with this tangent, as most tangents just seem to meander out by themselves. I thought that I would try and let that tangent meander out by itself. Uh, yeah, but yes, just returning to the note of comments, thank you very much to everyone who, uh, who left comments, uh, at the end of the video. There were, uh, a bunch of really, really interesting ones, and as I say, I, uh, I respond to uh, a good number of comments, and I read them all. So that is something that, that you guarantee with me. You guarantee that I will read your comment, even if it's a terrible idea that you're suggesting. Gosh darn it, I'll read it. I can I can disapprove of it, or I can approve of it, but there we go. I'll definitely read it. Anyway, I'm just terraforming this entire area so that we've got a little bit more access to oil. In all truth, this probably won't be the last time that we return to to this island. I should have said it. I should have said at the outset of the video what I actually want to accomplish today. Uh, that's a great. That's a great question. Well, there's a lot to do. There is a lot to do. I mean, you'd you'd think that in 1986, you know, the sort of golden years of this game, the golden years of the actual Soviet Union. I say golden years. I mean, you know, the final few years of the uh, of the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, you'd think that you'd think that things would be almost perfect. Alas, they are not. We have a lot to do. Chief amongst them is definitely sorting food. We definitely need to do that. However, we also have a bunch of other little uh, little mini missions to take care of, which I'm going to try and deal with over the course of this episode. I also want to set up, you know, proper transportation between the two halves of the map. I want to make sure that that is all up and running. Uh, let me just have a little look at large oil wells. Are we going to be able to stick down any more oil wells over here? Tell you what, bring it out over here. Good stuff. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty happy with the speed at which these bulldozers are operating. That's pretty darn good. But yeah, you know, I thought I would do this at the start of the episode. It gives us an opportunity to chat, dear viewer. And uh, it gives me an opportunity to just explain exactly what we're gonna, we're gonna try and accomplish over the course of this here episode. So that goes down there. That goes down there. Oh, it keeps getting better, doesn't it? It keeps getting better. This is exactly why I wanted to... I wanted to make sure that this area was all uh, juicy and ready. Uh, exporting ships as well. That has been suggested as a good uh, money spinner. 
I'm not against exporting ships, but I probably just want to continue to manufacture ships for my own use at the moment. I don't actually think that we have enough ships as part of my export fleet quite yet. I mean, certainly we're getting to the point where we're going to need more ships to do pretty much continuous cross-map uh, deliveries. So we're going to need to make sure that we've got enough ships to handle that. Uh, yep, that can go right over there. That can go right over there. And oh, we should I should just build that over here, shouldn't I? Can I use some uh, bulldozers, actually? Why am I going down? I want to be going up. We're on the up and up here. Right. Is this doing anything? Just asking for a friend, because I can't see anything being done. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. We don't necessarily need to terraform the entire island for the entire episode, and in fact, we're not going to be doing that. I just thought, you know what, we'll do this at the very start. Opportunity to catch up, opportunity to get it done dusted. Opportunity, really, for the construction offices to just sort of go ham whilst I'm focusing on other stuff. It's always really, really nice when you've got a bunch of stuff happening in the background of the game. You know, construction projects being dealt with. Yeah, it's real nice. Can't build this building on water. Okay, bring it up a little bit. Does that make any difference? There we go. Get it all leveled up a little bit. There we go. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, I think that's going to be enough for now. We can always return later and get more, if indeed that is what is required. Oh, just one more. Just one more. Come on. Come on, video game. Just one singular... Just one singular more oil well. Why the heck not? Can't building, you can't build this building on top of water. That's because it's too low. That's fine. There we go. That's the appropriate height. Brilliant. So let's get all of this linked up to the road network. I don't even know if the range of the road network is going to allow the constructing of these oil wells. However, we're going to give it a shot. We sure as heck are. Okay. Brilliant. And then we can go and take a little gander over to the... Coal, uh, the steel mill, etc., and have a little look at what's going on over there. Ooh, did I place oil wells over here? I don't think I did. I didn't place them around here. Okay, let me just place a couple more then. Oh, it's so good. The oil is so good. The oil is so juicy. Oh, we are never going to want for oil again, comrade. No, 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 no. Things are, things are going to be grand. Things are going to be glorious in our republic from now on. As if, I mean, they already were as glorious as they can be. This is going to go above and beyond the filthy capitalists' expectations of glory. This is going to redefine glory. This is glory on another scale, dear comrade. All right. Brilliant. I have no idea what I'm doing with this road. I'm just sort of going with it. There we go. It kind of worked out, I guess. Sure. All right. So, just bears repeating, but the... Brilliant construction offices can do a bunch of work to get all of this stuff built, and we pretty much don't need to worry about it for the next wee while. Okay, that's cool. Let's shoot across to... Da, 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 da. That's right, Industry Grad. How are things going at the steel mill? They're going great. Frankly, they are going really, really good. I don't think we've got any issues. We rectified at the very, very last moment there. Uh, we rectified the uh, the train issues, uh, the, the signaling issues. And I do believe that that should uh, should sort of work itself out of the system. We've got a we got a good delivery system going. We've got uh, a bunch of steel being moved to this small depot. We're still exporting steel. Maybe I should focus a little bit more on exporting to the open store, the small open storage lot. But yeah, to be honest, that's totally fine. I'm reasonably happy with how things are going. We're at 100% efficiency, apart from the fact that we've just run out of coal. I mean, that's a unique problem that I didn't really anticipate happening. Uh, part of the problem, I think, is that we actually are... We're so chock-a-block on trains. Yeah, we straight up are so chock-a-block on trains that we really probably need to get a couple more signals down here. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so a couple more signals on the return leg. That might just make the journey a little bit smoother. Because it does look a little bit congested from my perspective here. 
Okay, that's cool. Uh, Potato Grad is coming along nicely. We are making some significant improvements to the infrastructure. Still need a little bit of that steel, but we are getting very, very close over there. Uh, same with all of the infrastructure in the nuclear fuel fabrication area. Like, we are so, 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 so close to getting this area up and running. It's painful. The nuclear reactor still needs a bunch more steel, but that's coming along fine. You and you. In fact, we're we're basically done. We're basically done with these three buildings, in fact. We just need a, a tickle more steel, and then we will be over the line, which is wonderful. Very, very happy about that. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. As I've said, I'm really concerned. I'm really very, very concerned about a couple of things. Let me walk you through what I'm concerned about. First of all, food. I mean, if we have a little look at the amount of resources that we're actually importing, food is now, yeah... The vast majority of that. Meat as well. Meat is... Oh boy, look at how much meat that is. That's a heck of a lot of meat that we're importing right there. Uh, clothes as well. We're importing a heck of a lot of clothes. The the initial area that we set up to, to deal with coal produ uh, clothes production, food production, etc. Is just, is frankly unfit for purpose now. It really, really is. Also, what the heck is going on over here? Do we, do we need another signal on this track? I think we do. There we go. Okay, get another signal on that track. Okay, so yeah, basically, our food production area is totally, totally, totally unfit for purpose. It's it's not looking great. The other thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is how our electrical components uh, don't really seem to be doing a fantastically great job. We don't seem to be doing a fantastically great job of making electronic components, i got to be honest. That's actually because the Industry Grad Medium Distribution Office, it gets its steel from the... Yeah, so it gets its steel from the, yeah, the Mount uh, Cosmolet's open storage, which is the open storage right over here, which I think is actually a little bit of a mistake. I think I'm going to remove that connection, and instead, I'm going to try and get the steel directly from the steel mill itself. So we're going to actually load up steel at the steel mill. We're going to see if that makes any difference to the, uh, to the, to the calculations. Yeah, to be honest... 0%. We need to load. What am I doing? There we go. Okay, so now we load regardless of how much steel is in the steel mill, and we should we should just be able to take directly from the source. I don't love taking directly from the source. However, you can understand my reason for doing it. It's really important. It's really, really, really important that we get electronics set up. Like, we need to get electronics set up. It's, uh, it's a must. It really, really is. Uh, a couple of other things that I need to do just quickly is that we've got industry grad uh, gas station number two here. However, I need to set industry grad... Yes, I need to make, make sure that this is connected to the fuel distribution network so that we've got an ample amount of, uh, of coal. At, not coal. What am I talking about? Uh, an ample amount of fuel that can be delivered. But now that this is all connected up to the grid, we should... Yeah, we should find it a little bit easier to uh, to refuel vehicles. Hopefully, we're not importing that much fuel. Yeah, we're barely importing any fuel, actually. I suspect that most of the fuel that we're importing will be will be fuel, uh, but it'll be fuel for forklifts. So, kind of a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of an unnecessary, a little bit of an unnecessary purchase, but that's totally fine. Yeah, all of these fuel stations are looking pretty darn good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way that Potato Grad's looking at the moment. We've got a, I, I don't want to say that next episode is going to be a special episode all about Potato Grad, but there is going to be something special happening in, in next episode with regards to Potato Grad. So I guess you could say that that is kind of what's happening. Have we got the steel from the from the depot yet, from the steel mill. By the way, we should be, yeah, we should be hitting 100% of steel production, like, throughout the majority, the vast majority of this episode. Look at this. Look at this. We've got three trains. We've got two trains of iron, two trains of iron, processed iron, actually, and then one train of coal as well, not to mention all of the coal that we've got sitting in there, which is not very much, but that's fine, and then we've also got a whole bunch of iron that's, uh, that's being stored up in the storage. Okay. Brilliant, cool. Let's ping on over to Grainsky. Yeah, what's this? A school is on fire in Constructing Grad. Uh, yeah, didn't we have an issue where we don't actually have a fire station in Constructing Grad? Oh yeah, I rebuilt it thankfully just at the just at the end of the last episode after realizing that I've made a fatal error. Right, so 
What was I going to say? Yes, yeah, so let's look at Grainsky and let's let's just cast our eyes upon this, I mean, mess of an area. Now, this is where I suspect, by the way, that the vast majority of my fuel is, is being imported to. It, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that all of my fuel imports are, are coming right, right here. And it's not good. It's not good at all. We need to rectify this. We need to get this area cleaned up. Uh, frankly, we really, really do. Uh, we also need to, like, dramatically, dramatically, dramatically increase our food production. And part of that problem seems to be the fact that we don't have enough workers. So that's a real problem. Uh, but also, another problem is, is that we just don't have the infrastructure needed to make food at a consistently fast rate. What I mean by that is that forklifts just aren't able to deliver enough food. So we're going to fix that. Right, let's demolish this big field, right? We're going to demolish the big field. Yep, poof, disappears just like that. It does technically reduce the amount of, uh, of grain that's going to be entering the system at Grainsky Agro Farm. But frankly, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm just going to write off this entire area, but I am basically just going to write off this entire area. Not wholesale, but, you know, not... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna concern myself with it too much. Uh, the Grainsky Food Factory is gonna be shut down. We're gonna get rid of that Grainsky Food Factory. We're going to continue to use. We're gonna continue to use this infrastructure in order to manufacture alcohol. And I'm gonna try and see if we can use it to manufacture meat as well. However, that may not. That may not work. We'll. We'll. We'll experiment. Um, fundamentally, also, I'm going to be able to connect up most of these forklift routes, I believe. So that should be entirely doable. Right. There we go. There we go. But orbital, I hear you cry. That's right. That's right. Why would you? Why would you destroy an entire field that is thus far being, you know, used to produce grain and food for? actual consumption. Uh, why would you do that? That's a really silly thing to do. Well, ah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you in just a second, as soon as I can figure out how to fix this frippin' road here. Alright. No, I still haven't managed to figure it out. I, I, I'm truly incapable of making this work. Okay, there we go. I'm capable of making this work. Let's get that all built. We'll use dollars to do, uh, to do that. Okay, now great. Now, this leaves us with a nice wide open area that we are going to that we are going to really capitalize on so we got to think about this the warehouse the warehouse in the grainsky food factory has got a storage capacity of 72 tons right fine that's okay however we have to bear in mind similarly that there are two loading slots there are two loading slots over here so i think i think what i want to do is I want to see if I can try and get a setup. I want to see if I can try and get a, a mini setup. In fact, two mini setups would be would be ideal. So, what I want to do is I want to get a storage. I want to get a grain storage. In fact, I technically want to get two grain storages. Now, I know how disparaging people can be about grain storages. And look, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, comrades. I hear you. Grain storages, pretty garbage. Pretty garbage. However, I need them. I need them, I need them, I need them, and it'll become apparent in just a second why. I want to see now if I can get a food factory, and now I want to get two food factories, ideally. And I want to get it linked up just about like that. Yes, exactly like that. So we get that over there, and then we get this over here as well. Okay, that's very, very good. This is exactly the setup that I was going for. I'm actually shocked that it's worked this well thus far. And then... Just like that, we stick that in there like so. And... Yeah, I mean, it's not the perfect orientation, but I'll take that. Okay, so what you can now see is an experimental layout that I'm going to see if I can try and build. So, what it's basically going to do... What it's basically going to do is it's going to have... It's going to have an input. It's going to have an input that is going to be... 100% the well the inputs are all going to be used by the truck station so the truck station is this is not going to work uh, the truck station is exactly where we want to be bringing resources so we're going to bring all of the wheat all of the grain all of the goodness over to the truck station right uh, and then that is going to be added to the grain storage if there is indeed too many too many I don't know too many bits of grain that are 
that are coming in from the road cargo station, they're going to be added to the grain storage. Uh, but because the grain storage is directly connected to the food factory, it's going to be able to overflow into the food factory and, you know, it, it's all just going to hopefully work. So let's get one of these areas built just as like, a, I guess, like a test. Uh, I also need to make sure that I get a bus stop down here somewhere. I'll tell you what, the bus stop could go right over here, although I probably shouldn't make it right on this road because that is a fairly important road and I would rather avoid having it be congested or super congested, I should say. Right, brilliant. Let's get that in there, that across there. Fantastic. And that can connect up there. Yeah, sure. That's that's totally fine. I'll take that any day of the week. All right. Now, let's see if this will work. I do indeed believe it should. It's going to cost me a pretty penny in order to make it make it uh, possible. But that's totally fine. 220,000 per food uh, factory. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, this isn't a very space-efficient layout, although I think I think it's the best way of handling this, at least until I can figure out exactly the ratio of uh, resources that we need to get to the uh, food factory, i.e. I kind of want the grain storage to just be that intermediate step, that intermediary part of the process that we can use to, to buffer supplies. I don't know. Ever since playing Factorio, I've always been of the mindset that if you have the opportunity to buffer supplies, you should probably take that opportunity. Right. Okay. Next thing on the list that I need to get. Next thing on the list is I need to get a distribution office. And the distribution office is really going to be... In fact, maybe two distribution offices, frankly. Two distribution offices are going to be the, uh, the real power. The real power in this system. Right. Let's get these. Brilliant. And it's these distribution offices that are going to move the resources from where they are currently being stored and kept. Primarily, actually, Grainsky Grain Storage number two is, is, a, is a prime example of... I mean, we just have so much grain here that it's just kind of ridiculous. In fact, it might even be straight up worth me getting a, uh, a road cargo connection linked up to this grain storage because there is so many fields. Yeah, look at that. A thousand... It just keeps scrolling. A thousand tons of crops on that field ready to be picked up. Okay, let's um, let's do that. Let's ditch this small field. I mean, this I hate the small fields anyway. I am conscious of the fact that I am really torpedoing this agro farm's capability to farm. But I don't care. Why does that matter to me? It doesn't. It's really very, very unimportant. If I can get more grain out of this system, then that's great. Right, this is going to be a little bit of a dodgy connection. However... My name is Obra Potato, and I'm going to try my best to make it work. Is there any way in which this in which this works? That is not far off working. That that actually does work. Well, I mean, I am shocked, absolutely shocked. But sure, we can do that anyway. Uh, cool. Okay, so we've got the two distribution the two distribution hubs. Let's go to Covered Hall because Covered Hall is what we need. I uh, could use the CAS, but only if we set up electric wire, and I'm not inclined to do that quite yet. All right, whole bunch of trucks in there, whole bunch of trucks in there. Brilliant. Okay, so what we're going to do, 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 is we are going to set it up as follows. So we're going to set up this as a collection point. We're going to load crops there. Yep, brilliant. We're going to, I guess load crops from here. Yeah, we're going to load crops from there. Brilliant. We're going to load crops from here. Again, load. Brilliant. And is that every agro farm? That is actually legitimately every agro farm. Cool. All right. And then we're going to unload there and unload there. We need to make sure that both of these are set to unload. There we go, there we go, there we go. I tell you what, we can actually set it to load as well. And then load food. Load food. Brilliant. Because we've got 25 tons of export storage over there, which is totally fine. In fact, I tell you what, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do that with this road cargo station. Let's Let's not do that. Do I need to buff this up to 90? I think I need to buff this up to 90. Yeah, so as long as this grain storage is below 90% capacity, we're going to move resources over here. 
yeah, that seems pretty good to me. All right, and then this medium distribution office right over here can load food up from here and unload food over here, right? And that should, that should straight off the bat just, I mean, increase tremendously the amount of food that we're able to get out of this system. As I've already said, we're going to shut down the Grainsky Food Factory. We're going to shut it down. But the problem is, is that there are rather a lot of vehicles that currently access it. Although I think most of them should now be on... Now, should, now most of them should be part of a distribution network. He says very confidently, but in actuality, that's not the case. Also, I should have highlighted that the, you know, the, the real advantage of this system is that we don't have to rely on these silly little forklifts anymore. Now, I could upgrade the forklifts. I could upgrade the forklifts to make them not entirely garbage. I could upgrade them to the modded forklifts, kind of like I did over at the steel mill. That's not going to change too much, to be honest. So I'm not really concerned about that. Um, something else that we need to do is we need to increase the amount of, of houses that are available in Kolgradsky. I also should have highlighted that earlier. The fact that I'm only highlighting it now, frankly, doesn't matter. Because I think you, dear viewer, have known all along, as I have, that we need to do better in Kolgradsky. Kolgradsky is just a, it's just a little bit of a... It's just a little bit of a mess, to be honest. I mean, there's a flipping... There's two gravel processing plants in the center of town. I mean, that's not exactly... Not exactly a ringing endorsement for the place, is it? No, it's really not. It's really, really not. But the problem is that it's built on this really, really awkward hill. And we've done a fairly nice job with the hill so far. However, in saying that... In saying that... Maybe the hill is, is somewhat of an opportunity. I'll tell you what. Let me have a little look at this. Okay. Let's get this area flattened out. Let's get this area flattened out. And let's see if we can try and build some flats over here. Right. I don't want to flatten it too much. Because I kind of like using the features of the map in order to inform my, I don't know, town designs, I guess. If you can, on any level, say that I actually design my towns. Um, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking that we do is we see if we can try and get, hold up, let's get this all leveled out at the same level. Right, so we'll have like a two, a two level system. Right, what I'm thinking that we do is that we actually create like a, a brand new a brand new housing estate over here, right? There we go. Get this leveled out. Fine. Yeah, that looks totally okay. So we've got two levels. We got two levels here. A little bit of a sharp drop between them. A little bit difficult to see, but there we go. All right. And now what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and utilize. Do I want to try and utilize that bus stop? Probably not. That bus stop's a little bit garbage. It's a little bit garbage. And by a little bit garbage, I mean it's very garbage. Also, there are, there are buses that, that are routing people up here, but there's no connection. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a problem. Frankly. There we go. Okay. Build that. So that will fix our bus problem, I guess. Do buses... Can buses actually get around here? Hilariously, they actually can. Hilariously, they actually can. They can get all the way around on that little dirt road. But that's fine. Okay. So, I don't think I'm going to get the construction offices to do much building here. I think I want to do most of this building by myself. Right. So, I'm going to go get a 21-story prefab flat. In fact, I'm going to get lots of them. I'm going to get lots and lots of prefabricated flats. Now, I want the prefabricated flats to be on this level. We need to make sure that we space them out adequately. So that there's room for pathways around here. By the way, these roads are going to be all upgraded to nice, proper, not dirt roads. The people of Kobe are going to be distraught with anger. Distraught with anger that they contribute so much more to the economy. They, you know, they do a much harder job. I, I think you could maybe argue they, they support more of the, the really essential building of a whole bunch of projects. They support the building of electronics. They support the building of, you know, nuclear uh, nuclear reactors with those electronics. Support, you know, chemical production. Chemical production, of course, also useful in nuclear power production. And those people in Kobe still have, still have dirt roads. You can't really make it up, can you? You can't make it up. Well, that's not my problem, frankly. They, uh, they started with dirt roads, and they're probably going to finish with dirt roads. Let's be brutally honest. Okay, let's get this over here. Looking good. Let's get that built up. All right, so maybe you can start to see the design that I'm going for in my mind here. 
So that's going to go right about there, right about there, right about there, right about there. Wonderful. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to get a... Uh, sure. Yep. Get a nice road around the back of these flats. Oh, look at that curvature. Look at that curvature. All right, bring it in a little bit. Perfect. Looking very, very good. And we'll get a connection up. Look at that. Look at how professional that looks. Look at how professional that looks. Marvel at the professionalism, folks. This is incredible. Okay, and we're going to get another lane, another row of 21-story prefabricated flats. I love these flats so much. Like, they are fantastic. They are absolutely brilliant. I mean, I have used the People's Palace flats before. The People's Palace flats are great. However, I just don't feel like using them. I don't really feel like they, they fit the aesthetic altogether too well. Especially, especially given that this is like a, I don't know, middle of nowhere mining town. I kind of feel like these prefab flats really do fit the bill rather well. Okay, so after that, we need to make sure that we've got the required infrastructure. Now, this is kind of what this little plateau is for down here. So we're going to see if we can try and make this area, make this area work accordingly. We're going to get a shopping center right over there. Brilliant. We're going to get a cinema right over here. Fantastic. We're going to get a pub, just a single pub for now. What else do we need? Uh, nothing else really. Apart from, apart from a gymnasium, which I think is modded. Indeed it is. Sports playground, gymnasium. To be honest, could probably do with getting two gymnasiums. So we'll get two gymnasiums. We'll get them at either end of the area. That's cool. Uh, then, of course, we need to do schools. And schools and kindergartens are the big thing. So let's see if we can try and get two, honestly, maybe three kindergartens. Right, so something like that. And then maybe rotate this, actually. Something like that. Yep. And then let's see if we can get a school just in the center here. Okay, I think that should work. Now, of course, we're going to have to be a little bit terraformy. That is the technical term. I have to be a little bit terraformy with this, like, central area. But that's kind of okay. That's kind of what I intended to do anyway. Too steep for an incline? I mean, that's not... That's not very sporting video game, is it? Not very sporting at all. Still too steep for an incline. Okay, let's, let's whap out the wireframe. Alright. There we go. Works like a charm. Brilliant. That is a very ridiculously steep decline. And I'm not entirely convinced that we're going to be able to make it. I mean, that looks good though, doesn't it? That looks very good. Okay, wonderful. Alright, that connects up to there. Perfect. Uh, that can connect up over there. Brilliant. That can connect up over there. Grand. Probably want to try and terraform this area a little bit. There we go. Again, this is not really stopping the construction of future houses. It's just... I, I don't know. It's not It's not stopping them at all, actually. I don't even know why I said that. There is no reason why we wouldn't be able to return to this area and just reconfigure, reconfigure some of these plateaus for... For some brand new houses. Too steep an incline. Never fear. Potato is here. That's what I've told you to say. That's what I've told you to say. If ever you're in doubt, folks, just say, never fear. Potato is here. He'll manage to mess it up somehow. Okay. Now we need to make sure that all of these houses are connected to the back road. This is going to be ridiculously expensive, by the way. I haven't really thought through the cost implications of this. That's not going to work. Building is in the way. I mean, that is so defeatist. That is the most defeatist attitude that I've, I've seen thus far. 
There we go. That's looking good. Okay, so apart from one singular flat, all of these flats should be connected up to this network in some way or another. There we go. Okay, maybe this is a little OTT, but I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it a lot, actually. All right, so that's good. That's looking nice. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's why I left space between the buildings. That is exactly why I left space between the buildings. All righty. Okay, let's get that all, that all built. Fantastic. Uh, just one last thing that we need to do. In fact, actually, technically it's two things. Kind of should have kept a little bit of space here, but I think we should just be fine. I'm going to stick in a road, a proper a road, a proper bus platform, hopefully to a proper road. So if I equalize all of this, I think we should be able to make this work. It looks good. It looks real good. Okay, nice. Now the only other problem that I haven't remembered about is that I need to get a road out here somewhere. Too steep for an incline? I mean, that looks like it shouldn't really be a problem. There we go. No issues whatsoever. Brilliant. And can we... Can we eventually maybe get down to this area? We totally can. That's exactly how I wanted it to work. That looks like an absolute charm to me. Looks like an absolute charm. It works like an absolute charm. All right, everything connected to the road network. Brilliant. Not to mention, we're actually closer to the road over here, so we should be able to just immediately link things up. Wonderful. Let's get a connection over there, over there. And just like that, I think everything's going to work. I think absolutely everything is going to work. I just need to redraw a couple of these paths. But even that, I don't think should be too much of a problem. And if it is, we can always do a little bit of amateur terraforming again, can't we? Yes, we can. All right, that actually works. That actually works. That's brilliant. Fantastic. Get that in over there. That in over there. That in over there. Perfect. Okay. Some, you know, a little bit of glitching, but that's totally fine. So all of the paths are going to get built, which is perfect. We might need to adjust some of these paths, but to be honest, I actually think that the vast majority of the walking should be possible. Yeah, I think you're... Yeah, so these guys are going to be able to access every single building. And this is like the the furthest away the furthest away house. Uh, okay, a couple, of, a couple of teething problems, I guess. So that needs to get connected up there. We haven't actually connected up this... Uh, whatchamacallit, this gymnasium thus far. But we can just about manage that, I think. He says... There we go. That's looking pretty good. Uh, that's also looking pretty good. Yeah, sure. Give that a shot. All right, wonderful. So I think now we're ready to rock and roll. Now we are ready to rock and roll. What I'm going to do is in the first instance, I'm going to build the bus stop. And then I'm going to build all of the amenities. It's going to cost me a heck of a lot of money. But it's going to be totally worth it. So this entire area will probably be filled with just population overflow from uh, Kolgradsky. So everyone that's 21 and plus should be able to just move in here. What is this? Coal ore processing plant. Where are we? Oh, this is an industry grad. Uh, that might be somewhat of a problem, actually. Where are the fire truck's going to be dispatched from? Fire truck was called and is headed to the fire. All right, well, keep me in the loop on that one, please, video game. Because otherwise, if that was to burn down, then we might have we might have some significant problems. Okay, so the next thing that we want to worry about is power. And we are already, I mean, we're already pretty much at max power anyway. However, we're going to try our best to get another power cable to come out all the way over here. Brilliant. Cool. We somehow managed to sneak that around here. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Alright, and then a singular substation to power this entire area. 
I mean, it looks so good, but it's just not good enough, unfortunately. Right, we're going to have to get two substations. It sucks, but that's that's reality, unfortunately. Again, I'm in no doubt that we are going to end up amending all of this at some point in the future. But at least if we get it down at the moment, then, you know, we can, we can tinker around with it later as we go. Okay, brilliant. Let's bring this out here. Fantastic. Down yonder. Down yonder. Cool. All right, and we'll stick that in over there. Get the cable. Do the little trick. That allows us to go back on ourselves. Uh, cool. All right. Lovely. Wonderful. Looking good. Missing staff. Missing power supply. That's okay. We should have all of that built up in just a second, and that should bring with it a power supply. Fantastic. Now we're only missing staff. Okay. Well, we're ready. We're officially ready to start work on some of these some of these houses. So let's build what I don't know three of them. We'll build three of them for now. That's going to be over 900 additional population. I mean, what is this area going to bring? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 times 300. I mean, you do the maths. That's over 6,000 population, right? Just by my very, very rough calculations. 6,000 population. The population of Kolgradsky at this very moment in time, I believe, is about 6,000. Yeah, it's about 6,000. So we are pretty much doubling the population, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that is the most aggressive expansion of any place that we have built thus far. Right. Just building an additional three. Oh, yeah, go, let me go check on the fire. How are we doing at the fire over here? Ah, uh, the fire truck's actually en route. Very, very close. Cool. Love to see it. You love to see it. All right, brilliant. And I don't think we're going to have any issues putting out the fire over here. Fantastic. In you go. Brilliant. And a couple of citizens were killed, but that's okay. We'll just give them a monument in like five episodes, and then I'm sure everything will be forgiven. Cool. All right. So we're currently building a bunch of this stuff over here, which is great. No real particular rush on getting any of this done. However, it's happening. So there we go. The fire has been extinguished. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Are we storing food? We're storing food, which is great. We're starting to stockpile crops in both the grain storage and in the food factory, which is lovely. That's wonderful. I'm very, very happy about that. Right, we ain't loading food quite yet, but that's not a problem. All right, we got population moving in yet? We got any population moving in? We have no population moving in at all. Now, that's not necessarily a problem, because let's be frank, we have a overpopulation issue in Potato Grad, and if we need to move people from Potato Grad, we absolutely can, and we absolutely will. Uh, importing food, I mean, importing food is, is, not, a good, is not a good vibe. Uh, I can move people to there. Yep. Cool. So let's move food over to here, and storage percent less than 80%, sure. All right, so nobody's nobody's moving? Nobody's moving whatsoever. All right, it's a bit of a bummer. A bit unexpected, but whatever. All right, we've got two IKRs just sitting around waiting to be utilized, so let's immediately set them off. All right, just... Just the workers, please. Copy and paste excellent first stop is unreachable ah yes 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 love it when i don't forget to i love it when i don't remember to connect up the roads all right brilliant okay get that sorted oh i also have firefighting engines still over there okay well that's fine okay cool well uh, we'll get that all done that's lovely. That should make a real difference. Yeah, we should be good to go. We should be good to go. Still no one lives here. Now, why is that the case? Also, I need to make sure that I connect this up to the university properly. There goes. Too steep to 
build this fine average that out maybe that'll provide a little bit of a route there we go it does indeed fantastic and so that's us got university access which is which is lovely and we should be able to just connect this up to there and that should sort out most of the access for everywhere we can asphaltify this entire area if indeed that's something that we want to do but that's fine i'm going to stop anyone from using this bus stop to actually get in because i want all of the workers to go to this bus stop at the back right over here okay uh 614 people that are still living with their parents I'll tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to move everyone over to this flat over here there we go so at least all of the people in the town of Kolgradsky proper should be replenished. There we go. And move everyone out over here. Lovely. All right. So it's having exactly the desired effect. Might need to build another hospital. Haven't actually accounted for that as of yet, but that's totally fine. Right, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. And more, 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 more. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, brilliant. Alright, that's looking real neat. One singular problem that we have is the fact that this connection isn't built. There are no connections up and running over here. Get that rectified. There we go. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Looking real fancy. Looking real nice. Okay. We've got food to sell. We've got clothes to sell. We've got teachers. We've got kindergarten stuff working. That's great. All right. Wonderful. Unable to get electronics. Well, we're actually buying in electronics. I might leave that there for now. Uh, sport might continue to be a little bit of an issue. However, I do think that these two locations of the gymnasiums over here should make them accessible. All right, and how many workers do we have waiting at the bus stop? Not many. Not many at all. Not many at all. We don't actually have that many people over here. We just don't have that many people. All right. Uh, how many people are living with their parents now? Only, only a few. Right. Let's move one entire last building. Actually, what am I kidding? Let's let's do another building. Let's do one more last final building. There we go. Okay, so we've moved like what? 600 people across here? Something along those lines? Yeah, I think about 600 people live over here now. That's great. And that is perfect. Okay, uh, why is nobody going to work at the bus stop? It's a great question. One that deserves an answer, frankly. Also, are we still having... We're still having power issues. Holy cow. That's kind of incredible. I mean, it's incredible in a weird, good way. But also in a weird, terrible way. We're still producing coal, uh, still producing steel at a rate of knots, frankly. So that's really, really good. We got a train that is ready to be loaded up. We've got loads and loads of iron coming in. Holy cow, we've got loads of iron coming in. Just like that, we sort our iron issues. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? All right, well, that's looking really, really good. Uh, yeah, why, 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 is no one, why is no one chilling out over here? Why is no one working here? I mean, there's lots of people going to the shops. I get it. I understand it. But, but why? Why, why nobody, why, why does nobody want to work? Workers without jobs. Is it because their jobs have just been reassigned? Oh, yes. We don't have a church either. Kindergarten places. You should be able to get to the kindergarten. Kindergarten's not full already. Surely not. Right. Let's get a church down, shall we? There we go. Going to get a uh, medium cathedral. Seems a little bit OTT. Maybe a small cathedral? I feel like a small cathedral actually might be the appropriate building for this area here. here we go let's get this sorted uh flip it around 100 percent stick that in there brilliant these cost like what one thousand five hundred dollars to make because they're just entirely made out of wood 
All right, and get that sorted out too. Wonderful. Okay, bunch of citizens unable to get electronics. Well, if you just saunter down to the shops, you can you can get your electronics right now. All right. So still no workers wanting to work at the bus platform, or want to congregate at the bus platform, I should say. Am I doing something dramatically wrong? Is it because I've just moved people across? Every single flat should be accessible. Maybe people are just, you know, getting to know their surroundings a little bit, I guess. I, I don't know. It's real funky. It's real funky. We've not got a single... We've not got a single flipping person waiting at the bus platform. What the heck is going on? Is it because this is already supplied with workers? No. Yeah, that's within walking distance. That's within walking distance too. So we should have 170 jobs per food factory here that are up for grabs. And yet nobody is remotely interested in working at the food factory. How very peculiar. Okay, in order to maybe fix this problem, we're gonna see if we can try and build like a couple more flats. Let me build three more. Sure, I'll build three more. See if that makes any difference. Do I want to import people? No, I'll just pop across to Potato Grad just for a second. There we go. Look at this. Flats are coming along nicely. All right, and then I'm just going to load an entire flat worth of people into here. I tell you what, literally... Literally one single flat is replenishing so darn quickly. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is crazy. This is Potato Grad. This is the sheer number of people that we have in Potato Grad. Okay, there we go. So literally everyone. Literally everyone that we can fit into here. We're going to fit into here. Ah, we've got workers. Okay, so apparently we just had too few workers to man this entire area. I don't understand why that's the case, but I'm delighted that it's been fixed. Okay, a couple of workers due to sickness. Can't work. It's fine. There we go. Okay, so we've moved a good number of the people from Potato Grad. However, I bet my bottom dollar that there's still going to be thousands of people living with their parents. Look at that. Over a thousand plus people still living with their parents because they can't find accommodation. <laughs> That's crazy. That is bonkers. Okay, so now we should get a decent supply of workers. And again, there's none of them. There's none of them. There's just no workers. Unable to get electronics. Pub slash tavern. There is a pub slash tavern available here. Uh, let me see if I can do something real quick. Can I get a little bypass here? Yeah, so something like this to just bypass this hill and this cinema, actually. There we go. And then that can come down to the pub. I don't know why I just didn't make an entirely separate pub. We can totally do that. An entirely separate pub is, is, not, is not an onerous task. Well, to be, to be quite brutally honest, I don't think we do have any onerous tasks remaining because all of the onerous tasks are uh, accomplishable by using the copious amount of finance that I have available at my fingertips. Again, like, where's the, where's the workforce? Where's the workforce? Is this a bug that I'm experiencing right now? We've got two vehicles. I'm not letting people accumulate over there. I mean, how does everyone have a job? Everyone, you tell me everyone in this flat has got a job? Unable to get electronics? Uh, you're able to walk to the shop, so you should be able to sort that out soon. Everyone has a flipping job? I, I, please tell me exactly how that's possible. I would love to know. Uh, give me equipment for citizens. Give me a hospital. Build a hospital out over here. Have I... Have I done something wrong? 
Is it because there's too many inputs? I have frankly zero idea out of the th one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is nine times three. Nine times three is 27. 2,000, 2,700 people that live here. And not a single worker is waiting? It's because they're all going into the other flats. Of course, of co Potato, you dingus, you total, total dingus. I was, I, oh my goodness. All right, well, you know what? Just retract, if you're still watching, retract your comment. Retract your comment from the comment section. I appreciate I'm an idiot. I've solved it. I've cracked the issue. Oh, goodness gracious me. I have cracked the issue in a major way in the most embarrassing fashion possible. You know what? It's time for that little... It's time for that little code word, right? It's time for that little code word. Okay. If you're watching at this point in the video, you gotta let me know that baguettes are subpar. That's right. I said it. The code word is baguettes are subpar. Technically code words, but there we go. Okay, look at that. 400 workers, just like that. I solved it. I solved the problem. I also created the problem. So, you win some, you lose some. Bada bim, bada boom, whatever. Okay, uh, let me see if I can, like, triple the amount of buses that I actually have. Oh my goodness. This is a incredibly huge truck. We're gonna deal with this in the next episode, but that's, that's really, really good news. Okay, so what I want to do, a couple of IKRs. By a couple of IKRs, I mean as many IKRs as I can actually buy. Uh, cool. Looking good. Looking, looking real fancy. Let me copy the route over here. By the way, that's baguettes are subpar. Comment that in the comments down below if you're still watching at this point in the video. Let me indeed know that you're, uh, that you're here. And tell me what you think of this Workers and Resources Soviet Republic series. I'm having a whale of a time. Right, 120 workers zipping out on the train. That's not too bad, actually. That's not too bad at all. 69... <laughs> 69 adults that are still living with their parents. Okay, so let me build one more. One more house. That should allow us to be totally fine. Building is without a power supply. Yeah, I do kind of worry that we just don't have... We just don't have anywhere near enough power coming through here. It's a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a problem, but hey-ho. Okay, so... This building also doesn't have a power supply. That's also somewhat of a problem. Okay. Cool. Right. Yep. Keep bringing it out over here, and we will connect this up to our transformer over here as well. Brilliant. Alright, lovely. Looking good, looking good, feeling good, feeling groovy. I think we must be maxing out our power that we're producing at this at this coal power plant. We're not really. We're maxing out we're maxing out the amount that we're transmitting through these cables, aren't we? I think that's the problem. I think that is, in fact, the real problem. Right, are we making electronics? We are indeed making electronics. That's brilliant. Nope. Well, we're making electronic components, but we are going to be making electronics at some point soon. We got any in storage? We don't have any electronic components in storage, but that's not a problem at all. How are we stuck here? How are we stuck here? Missing coal. I mean, that's terrible. Where are the trains? Where the heck are the trains? Why are they all stuck over here? What's going on? What's going on, chaps? Why is this not working? You're waiting to get into the iron area? I mean, that's fine. I appreciate that. Coal ore. Okay, I'm going to wait until unloaded on you again. Are we okay for coal ore? Is it... Oh, I tell you what, it's the power. It's the fact that we don't have enough power. We're just not loading it up fast enough, are we? Yeah. That's the problem. That is the problem. Because we don't have a consistent power supply, we're just not loading it up as uh, as regularly as we should. Alright, well, I tell you what. Good progress on the iron ore processing facility. Decent progress on the, uh, on the conveyor belt over there. Right. Are we making food? Also... The buses need to drive all the way around. I didn't even realize that. That was my bad. I thought I had connected this... Uh, I thought I had connected this road up, but apparently 
I'd neglected to do so. Either way, this should give us, like, a gargantuan amount of food production. Like, a truly gargantuan amount of food production. Yeah, like, this is... This is... This is what we need to happen. This is really what we need to happen. Right, building is on fire. It's a... Ore processing facility in industry grad that's very accessible by this fire station over here so i'm not worried about that at all i'm always a little bit cautious a little bit wary if it's an, an you know an industrial building that catches on fire but that's fine okay lots and lots of food is available the distribution office this distribution office over here is kicking into effect which is great and we're loading all of the food into these two warehouses over here only 6.6 .6 tons waiting in that warehouse and the food train is about to come back around can you believe that that's ridiculous. Only 6.6 .6 tons in each warehouse. That is, that is frankly shocking. Frankly shocking. Right. And now we have hundreds of workers w going to the field. Okay. Well, that's great. That's, that's wonderful. A uh, little bit of oversupply there, but I guess that's okay. I guess we can just about live with that. That's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world at all. In fact, maybe it's worth me connecting up a footpath around here in order to get additional workers to the meat processing facility. The reason that I suggest that is because the meat processing facility is going to stick around as one of the buildings is going to stick around as one of the buildings that we actually use the forklift network to supply with uh, with crops. So we're going to want to keep this this around for sure. Uh, live stock whole range. Yeah, that's fine. I should just get a meat storage over here, by the way. I haven't got a meat storage over here for, well, since the beginning of the game. But there's no reason not to get a meat storage if I'm going to be clearing out a bit of this nonsense here. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe there's not enough space for it, but, eh, that's fine. Okay, so the livestock farm should be fully stocked now. That's great. We should be able to keep that reasonably... Yeah, we should be able to keep reasonably on top of the amount of livestock that we've got. Uh, we're probably going to need to get a meat storage area because, I mean, we just should. And now we can't export food because we've got so much food. Right. Crank that up to 90% so that we're always, always, always moving stuff out of these two road cargo stations. Because we only have a 25-ton food buffer. There's a 25-ton export limit that we can have on food. So we need to make sure that we are constantly taking food out of this area. That's good. Very, very good. Very, very happy with that. Nice. Yeah, that's real good. Real good. And so that should constantly be kept busy, which is great. Load up if there's ever more than any tiny little pimple of food. That's totally fine. Uh, I think... I think we're doing fine for supplying this area with grain. Yep, yeah, we got a grain storage in there. Grain storage in there. Yep, that's totally fine. We're okay with grain. And now the great news is that we don't need to rely on forklifts to move the grain into the food processing facility. So that's really, really nice. Another 25 tons of crops just waiting to be picked up right over here. Wow. Um, that's a problem. That's a problem. I did not anticipate. I did not anticipate this being as much of an issue as it actually is. There is another connection out here. So we could get a warehouse in somewhere as like a, an intermediary or intermediate step, I should say. But I didn't really think that that would be necessary. I thought that we would have the, I guess, the distribution capability to pick up, to pick up food from this, uh, from this cargo station at all times. But apparently not. Apparently that's just not working. We've still got three lorries just chilling out over here. Yeah. 14 tons of food waiting over there. 25 tons of food waiting over there. This is a... Yeah, it's a bit of an issue, actually. A bit of an issue. I don't understand why they're not going to pick that stuff up. Is it because we've hit above the 80% limit. Let's increase the amount of food that we store here, actually. All the way up to 50%, sure. Will that change anything? Does that get any more trucks distributed and uh, engaged in the process? I think it does. I think it does. 
Okay, so that's 50, 58 tons of food in either warehouse, which is very, very nice. Pretty happy about that statistic. I like it a lot. All right, this entire area is just working a heck of a lot smoother now. I guess the next stage is to get more regular trains. More regular trains picking up food from uh, the Grainsky warehouse. Again, what the heck is the issue here, folks? What the heck is the issue? Ah, uh, yes, the issue is power. The issue is power. The issue is 100% power. Right, get you to move on. Get you to move on. Brilliant. Yep, we are we're not loading we're not loading fast enough, and that's a big old problem. That is a big old problem because we need to be loading faster. We need to be loading faster. Okay, great. The grain situation is great. It's literally just a case of moving more food. That's literally what we need to do. That is literally what we need to do. I tell you what I think I might just do. Maybe a little bit overkilly, but that's fine. I'm gonna get down another medium distribution office. One final medium distribution office. This medium distribution office can be built with rubles. That's totally fine. And then this medium distribution office is going to deal exclusively with this road cargo station. So this medium distribution office can deal with this one. And this medium distribution office can deal with that one. I'll tell you what, I'm going to buy the brand new modded truck that I did say was kind of cool. Where is it? We've got the Maz... We've got the Maz, but this is the one that I want. Yeah, this is it. The Maz 2000. The Maz 2000. We're going to get loads and loads of these trucks. 56,000 rubles a pop. Very, very expensive. However, they carry 22 tons of food. They're really very, very large. Look at the size of these beasts. Yeah, they're a, they're a brilliant modded truck. I like them a lot. I love the Maz. It's fantastic. Okay, you control that one. Okay, so that's this one. Cool. Brilliant. Brilliant. Load up at Grainsky Road Cargo Station 2. Unload at Grainsky Road Cargo Station, the OG. Load up food. Unload food. Storage percent, 90. Storage percent, 0. Brilliant. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Are we above 90? We shouldn't be above 90. Yeah. Load food, zero, yes. Unload, storage percent. Now, why is this uh, Why is this not working? I do believe there is indeed a road that takes... takes everyone to where they need to go. Yeah, this is fine. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why this isn't... Uh, don't know why this isn't recording is working. It might be because there's already enough trucks in transit to move all of the requested food out to the out to the cargo station. I guess that's probably what it is. Yeah. So there's a couple of a couple of a, tr a couple of trucks in transit already moving the food up to the ninety percent threshold. However, that's going to be pretty much rectified once we get a pretty much a full load of. A full load of food, and then, yeah, these trucks are going to be immediately dispatched. Okay, very, very cool. I like that a lot. And so for the first time in what feels like forever, 230 tons, 230, to, uh, 230 tons of food. That is very, very, very good. That is... I don't want to say that that's definitively food fixed, but it's a very, very good step in the right direction. A very, very good step in the right direction, like... A solid step in the right direction. We need to get all of these trucks eventually replaced with the the massive Maz land train thing, which carries oh so much, oh so much goodies, oh so many goodies, oh so many goodies, lots and lots of goodies. Um, but you know what? We're gonna have to wait until the next episode to deal with that. As I said, baguettes are subpar. Bonus points for spelling baguettes correctly. Uh, thank you to Banana Nanana and C Senpai for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 and above tier. Uh, thank you very much to all of the Patreon supporters over at patreon.com forward slash over the potato. As you can see, they're all on screen right now. All of these are fantastic individuals, and uh, I'm very grateful for the support of each and every one of them. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for, uh, for watching this episode of Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. My name, of course, has been over the potato. I'll see you next time, comrade. Bye.